Welcome, everyone. This is the Jenkins Governance Board meeting. It's the 15th of May, 2023. Topics I've got on the agenda include news, action items, uh, budget and expenses, uh, Kevin Martin's absence for a month as documentation officer, application to Ampere for ARM hardware, proposal to cancel the May 29 governance meeting in two weeks, and community activity. Any other topics that anyone wants to be sure we add to the agenda? None here. Oh, oh, actually, I missed one in the news section. Um, CD Con, oh, it's already here. Good. CD Con completed. Good. All right, then let's go ahead. So by way of news, we've got a 2.401 release candidate scheduled for Wednesday. Thanks very much, Alexander, for your willingness to act as release leads, as, as the release lead. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and thanks to Basil Crow. Basil, thank you so much for the prototype JS work that you and Tim Jacome have been doing. The blog post is live and it guides people who may not be experienced with Jenkins or who want to learn more about JavaScript. Hey, here's a chance to do it and do it in a way that really helps the Jenkins project. Thanks very much. Uh, we've got four Google Summer of Code projects that have started. Uh, thanks in advance to the mentors and to the contributors. And congratulations on the Jenkins Awards to the three award winners, to Jan Faracik, to Daniel Beck, and to me. Tomorrow, we've got a plug-in security advisory. Thanks to the Jenkins security team, they sent the announcement out forewarning Jenkins administrators that they'll be seeing some updates to plugins related to security tomorrow. And plugins.jenkins.io now shows health scores. So the, the scores are visible at the bottom of each card, telling you how healthy or unhealthy a particular plugin is, guiding you on whether or not you should install it. Any questions on the news items? Okay, next topic then is action items. So easy CLA, no progress from Oleg, no requirements yet as far as I can tell. Subprojects and SIGs into a single concept. I've actually started the work on this one and will continue that. There's, there's more work to be done, lots, lots more work to be done, and uh, it'll just continue. The retirement of the Jenkins, the Chinese Jenkins site has also started. Uh, so it's no longer visible on this page here or on the drop downs. And we don't have the full redirects yet, but we've got this first that first step taken. Uh, governance meeting archive. Sorry, that's no further progress on that. We've got answers with from the infra team that will place it in Jenkins infra. I've started the retrospective on the signing certificate renewal process, capturing the notes in that Google Doc. After a week or two of me gathering timelines and other details, we'll we'll actually host a formal meeting where we where the players in the session talk about it and go through it. And the last one, uh, the reimbursement process for the code signing certificate is continuing and made new progress today. Any questions on any of the action items? Okay. Uh, for the for the uh, retrospective, uh, are you including in that the uh, conversations you had with the Linux Foundation folks about the? I, I remember the last meeting you you had mentioned that you talked to them and they had given you some ideas about different ways that this could be done. For example, I think one of them was having a dedicated package that simply updates certificates. I remember you mentioning that they had seeded that idea. And since you mentioned that, I I noticed that some of the uh, software that I use on my own desktop is using the same techniques. Um, for example, I think I noticed that Microsoft was doing something similar for VS Code, which I have installed on my computer. Mm. Um, 
and I think they had, I don't know if it was VS Code or some other program I used, but but I saw the same technique being applied uh, there with this kind of dedicated package for updating certificates or, or keys. Um, and I thought uh, it would be interesting to learn more about that. So if uh, is that being included in the retrospective or is that a different topic? No, no, that's that's absolutely that's those two things are i think key parts of the re retrospective because they are they are well they were both really bumpy and there's no need they have to be that bumpy so yes you're absolutely right and they will be included there in the retrospective okay great any other questions on op on the action items Okay, next topic then is on budget and expenses. So the 1500 US that I spent for the digit code signing certificate is now in progress. The, the expense report has been submitted to the Jenkins Project's designated single finance uh, person. And that I think right now is Oleg, so I'll ping him separately after this meeting to let him know that he should have seen an email that invites him to approve it. Once his approval is generated, then it goes to the Linux Foundation and their NetSuite system where they send it out for disbursement. Now we've got an additional test case where Oleg had already approved this $52.99 expense from last year, and they have refreshed it at the Linux Foundation, sent it to NetSuite for disbursement. So. I will check with Vodek uh, tomorrow to see if he's he's made any if he's seen anything indicating he's been paid. Any question on the budget and expenses? Okay, next topic then is the board received a note from Kevin Martins that he'll be unavailable May 12 to June 12. But before uh, before we move on, I had one question about the certificate. Is this hmm. the? I was just curious. After we after we uh, uh, reimbursed you for this, is is this what what was done previously? Like the last time the certificate expired, or is this a new process that we're coming up with? So it was, I think, the last time three years ago when we had to do the the certificate reimbursement. Olivier Varnam handled the expenses, and I believe he was reimbursed, but the Expensify system that we were using at that time, or the expense reimbursement system, was different from three years ago than it is now. So it's not so much that this is a new process, because it's the same process we used with sure. Vodic Folonier a year ago, but it is, there were enough wrinkles and bumps and bruises in it that, that it, it felt almost like a new process. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, good. Then on Kevin's absence, so as documentation officer, he notified the board that he'll be unavailable May 12 to June 12. What I'd propose is let's intentionally choose to just have other members of the community help out during Kevin's absence. For instance, he's been working on the change from Java 11 to Java 17 in the documentation in the install docs. Let's just accept that'll be delayed and others are welcome to help. Uh, documentation pull requests, we invite all the documentation contributors to help there. And I'll volunteer to take on the change logs and the upgrade guides. Alex, does that work okay for you from the perspective of the 2.401.1 release lead? Absolutely. Okay, great. Any concerns there on the plan for what to do during Kevin's absence? Okay. Next topic then was, uh, I sent a request to the board about three or four weeks ago suggesting that we'd had an opportunity presented to, to us by Ampere. Ampere is a, a hardware vendor. They, they created and sell systems based on ARM 64-bit server class processors and their equipment. They're used at Oracle for their cloud hosting, and I believe at one or more other cloud vendors. 
and they'd offered the, that, hey, they donate to open source projects that are interested in using their hardware to do some validation. And this was a, an offer of physical hardware. And it happens that I already have physical hardware at my house. So I prepared an application and sent it out to the board two or three weeks ago. Uh, two weeks ago, it got approvals in various places from Alex and from Uli. So I went ahead and forwarded it on to Ampere. Any concerns that want to be expressed about that? The idea is we'll put it in, in my house and connect to it as necessary to use it for Jenkins purposes. Oh, that sounds great. Okay. Next topic was two weeks from today is a U.S. holiday. So I'd propose we cancel the meeting that's scheduled for two weeks from today unless there are compelling reasons we need to have it. I'd like to take that U.S. holiday off and spend it with family. I'm in favor of canceling the meeting because in a couple of weeks, we also have a holiday over here. Oh, oh, so it's not just a U.S. holiday. It's also a European holiday. Good. All right. Even better. Okay. Any objections to the cancellation then? Great. Go ahead. So I'm going to list plus one from all three attendees. Great. Thank you. Okay, next topics then are community activity topics. And here, um, I think it might be might be good to give Basel some time to share if you'd like Basel on the prototype JS work. On the artifactory work, we're making progress. I need to schedule a session with JFrog to summarize our latest results and talk in more detail with them about next steps. I'll do that and have something to report at our next meeting. Did you want to give any further details on prototype, Basel? Uh, I don't have too much to add to the blog post. Uh, there's a developer mailing list thread where I listed a, a number of plugins that I've identified that uh, in, my, in my quick search to look for common keywords that are associated with prototype but I am planning to do a more thorough search in the next couple of weeks. Um, there's a lot of low hanging fruit that I wanted to get out of the way first. Um, and that includes the dozen or so pull requests that I've already filed against um, some of the most popular plugins. Um, and that low hanging fruit, uh, effectively makes it more difficult to find the higher hanging fruit because it gets in your way. So um, I am planning on doing a more thorough search. And when I when I do uh, get to that, which is probably going to be the next couple of weeks, um, I'll create a some kind of spreadsheet or tracking system. Uh, and that would be uh, that would be a good way to coordinate um, to coordinate efforts to fix plugins. Um, I think the, the I've done a couple of these types of spreadsheets where I have the plugins sorted by popularity and use different colors to indicate status, such as whether a release has been done or if we're still waiting on the pull request to be merged, et cetera. Um, so uh, once we have that, I think, it, it would, I'll, I might go back and update the blog post and add a link to it. Um, but at this point, uh, the best, because a number of people have asked me, like, where do I start? And that mailing list thread, the list of plugins there is, is the best place to start right now. Uh, and that, and, that, and uh, like I said, I'll make that more formal in a spreadsheet once I get the chance to do a more thorough search. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions, Alex, from you in terms of prototype JS or from anyone else? Okay, then let's go ahead. Next topic then was Google Summer of Code. Congratulations. The Jenkins project has been approved for four Google Summer of Code projects. Each of the project has projects has a designated lead mentor, 
and two or three additional mentors to help help that contributor be sure that they are successful. Thanks very much to John Mark, to Chris, to Alyssa, and to Bruno for their work as organization admins. On infrastructure, we've got an active effort going on to reduce infrastructure costs. Uh, Damien de Portal, Hervé Lemieux, and Stéphane Merrill have each been working on various aspects of this, including things like looking at better choices of machines to be used that are more cost effective, or switching some tasks from AMD 64 to ARM 64, or reducing bandwidth demands when bandwidth is a high cost item. Thanks to them for, for that ongoing work. It's, it's very, very promising. It's looking really good. Then I've got an ongoing project to propose an early end of life for CentOS 7 in the Jenkins project. And there's a developer mailing list thread on it. It will be continuing. Uh, it's probably several months before it will get to the point of being ready to announce with blog posts, et cetera. But I'm determined we're going to get that thing end of life before June 30th, well before June 30th of 2024. Any questions on any of the topics up to this point? Hey, last topic then was launchable experiments. So Basel has been leading an effort to, to test drive ways to reduce the number of tests that we use and still get high quality results from our tests. Uh, using launchable, a product or a company's, a product from the company that Kosuke Kawaguchi is part of now. Basel, anything that you want to talk to on this one in terms of ongoing or thoughts? Yeah, the next uh, step in this project is to enable it for Windows tests in Jenkins Core. And uh, then after that, um, I plan on adding uh, a launchable subset of ATH to Jenkins Core as well. Um, so those are those are kind of the first two areas where I think it makes the most sense to use launchable. Um, you know, I know that uh, the infrastructure team has been trying to reduce costs in ATH itself. Um, so that's also an option um, if they wanted to, because I know that uh, they were talking about, you know, do we need to run all ATH tests for all dependency updates, you know, similarly to BOM and you know, launchable could be used to implement subsetting there uh, in much the same way. So uh, that's another option. Uh, I probably won't get to using launchable in BOM itself till after we're successfully using it in core and ATH, um, which might be more in, in a couple of weeks. Great, thank you, thanks very much. Any other topics we need to discuss here in governance meeting? I do have a couple of items I didn't add on the agenda before. Um, the first is maybe you already noticed it. I enrolled the Jenkins CI and Jenkins Infra organization into the private GitHub activity beta thingy. I posted on Gitter a couple of hours ago all repositories within these organizations now have an activity item on the right hand of the repository overview. It actually doesn't add anything new of content. It is like git log just with a web UI dashboard. Example, so and it, you're saying it would be visible even now. So if I were to open up a, a plugin repository, I should see it. Let's pick something fairly innocuous. This one. Yeah, then the right below. Oh, there it is, policy. activity. Okay, got it. That's basically the same output if you type git log in your shell, just in a visualized form, of filtering between pull request mergers, force pushes, and so on. Thought would be a nice addition for our maintainers. Nice. Thank you. Any questions from others on, on the GitHub activity facility? No, thank you. No problem. 
the, the other item was regarding our Jira instance. I'm not sure how much you track the Jira um, support and end of life cycle. However, we are currently on Jira 8, which will be end of life and actually end of support within the next five months. And I was wondering if the Linux Foundation plans an upgrade or if we need to request an upgrade from the Linux Foundation from the current LTS to the next LTS. Uh, good question. So usually we request it and they will take the action on our request. Yeah, if so I that, correctly... I'm happy to open that ticket. I've I've done those before or you could open it, Alex, but whatever your preference is. I think Jira 8 is end of live between um, mid of October this year and Jira 9.4 or 9.2 would be end of live in late 2025. And that is the current LTS version, which we likely would go to. Good. Thank you. Thanks for detecting that. So how did you how did you find that? Was that something that the user interface announced and I just missed it or? No, no. If you take a look at the bottom footer of issues at Jenkins.io, it tells you the version. And compared to other JIRAs I'm using, I was, I was a bit surprised that we are still on 8.20. Got it. Okay. All right. So if you're okay with it, let me put an action item to open the JIRA ticket. For sure. Uh, go ahead and open this issue those with the Linux before. Foundation. I don't mind. Yeah. Yeah, our Jira instance is certainly it's it's a, a somewhat of a distinctive case in that it is a Jira. What do they call it? It's a it's it's their data, data center, center I guess. edition, right? Because we're uh, because of the size of the number of users we have, we're allowed to continue being self-hosted or being hosted by the Linux Foundation. Thank you, Alex. Any anything else? All right. Thanks very much. Let's go ahead and and call an end to the meeting. Thank you. Thank you.